Election night. To those involved, a night of hope and expectation, of counting and waiting, of tension. And to those who are chosen, joy and exhilaration. Many congratulations to all of you for passing democracy's time-honored test. But if you thought getting elected was the difficult part, that's just the start of it. It's quite overwhelming. The very worst bit was after the count and having my photograph taken at half past one in the morning, which then appeared on all my passes. <laughs> so <laughs> I wasn't exactly at my best at, at, at that point. Hello, I'm Graham Gardner and as a journalist and broadcaster I've been covering local government and coming to council meetings for more than 30 years. And in this short film I'll show you some of the things that you can expect because this is where the real work begins and coming here for the first time can be a bit daunting. This is a typical council chamber. Yours may differ in style and decor, but however it looks, it will be laid out along similar lines. <laughs> it was the most intimidating day of my entire life. When you first walk into that council chamber, it's not something that you're expecting. First of all, there's, it's the formality of it. It's the fact that you have to stand up when the mayor walks in, the fact that uh, he has a person walk out in front of him with white gloves carrying a mace, and it's not until all the procedures have gone through that you can sit down and take your place in whatever debate is going to happen. At the focal point, facing the members, sits the council chairman. To the chairman's right, as we look at it, sits the chief executive and the monitoring officer, the council's solicitor. Both are able to offer advice on procedure if necessary. Alongside them are the democratic services staff. They take the minutes, provide advice as required and help to ensure that the meeting runs smoothly. Well, it was a bit daunting. I come from a non-council background, so I was looking to uh, look and learn initially. Um, first day I wasn't even sure where I was sitting so that was an issue for the chamber so you know I split on party lines so you know that was that was a bit of a consideration just where to go and what who to sit with but I had a mentor um, who was sort of guiding me on that um, but yeah the first sort of times was definitely a looking and listening situation. In the body of the chamber as we look at it sit the political party with most members what you might call the ruling party or the administration always assuming they achieved a majority. Councillor Steve Jordan. This is the party that won most seats at the election. The rest of the chamber is filled by the opposition. Very often there is no clear division, but members of each party sit together. Independent members, that's to say those that are not members of a particular party, also tend to sit together, but they don't have to if they don't want to. Initially, obviously, I, I sort of was resentful of the change in the council and felt, you know, I don't necessarily feel there's any role for me here because it had changed so dramatically. Um, since then I've you know learnt to respect and work with people from all parties. Um, that's been one of the interesting things that um, you can get away from the politics very easily when you get onto a task group dealing with car parking charges or ambulance service delivery. You wouldn't know who was in which party. In this council seated behind the members are the chief officers. It's usual for chief officers to attend four council meetings, but they may not always be seated in this position. We as officers of the council try and brief elected members as well as we possibly can about what being a member involves, including council meetings. I think the reality, though, is that you can't really understand a council meeting until you've been to one. Uh, and in fact, the truth is probably you need to go to several before you really understand what's going on. Thank you, Mr. Journalists are also allowed by law to cover all council meetings unless exempt items are being discussed, in which case they are required to leave. Otherwise, they too have a place within the chamber. Exempt business is usually personal information relating to an individual or something that is commercially sensitive, perhaps relating to a tender or contract. It's important that council business is carried out in an open and transparent way, so you should find that very few items are exempt. If members have an interest in an issue that could influence whether they vote in favour or against, they have to declare it publicly, before the meeting. Councillor Morris. Uh, yes, Mr Mayor, um, I declare a personal prejudice or interest for exactly the same reason as the leader yes. has just given. You will have to leave the council chamber, you appreciate. Councillor Webster. Personal and prejudicial 
Personal interest, Mr Mayor, which has been registered. I'd like to declare a personal interest in item 13. Councillor Britta, right. When you become a new member, there's an awful lot to learn, particularly if you haven't been a councillor before. And um, I think that was the most difficult part. And I think the important thing is to have really good support from democratic services, attend every meeting that you possibly can, because in that way you, you learn the um, workings of, of the council and attend every, every training session. And I think a training session, if it's held with some officers as well, officers and members get to know each other. There's rules and you have to stand up and sit down at certain points, so a cross between the first day at school and go to church really, sort of. And then, uh, and then you sort of start to get the hang of it and see this pattern to events and try and whistle what's going on now, shuffle your paperwork, that kind of thing. Towards the back of the chamber are seats for anyone else because all meetings are open to the public, even though they're not automatically allowed to take part in the debate. The public are usually allowed to ask questions at full council, having first given the appropriate period of notice. Again, you will need to check with your democratic services team to see what rules are in place in your council. Just like the media, the public are required to leave if exempt business is being considered. Once the meeting is underway, it follows a strict procedure, which is laid down in the meeting procedure rules within the council constitution. You should be given a copy of your council's constitution shortly after you're elected. It's just like starting a new school. You don't know the people, you don't know the building, you have to find your way around, you have to find the right people and say the right things to the right people because you don't always know who you're talking to. So it does help if everybody wears their badges. Yeah, it is very overwhelming learning how this you know, huge ship operates basically and, and, and working out who are the people to talk to, who's, who's a relevant person in the department, how if you've got a, a ward issue, who, who you go to, or if you've got a policy issue, who, who you'll go to. So they're, they're two very distinct things that you're trying to do. Issues to be discussed are set down in a specific order on the agenda. Councillors wishing to ask a question or move a motion will need to give an appropriate period of notice. This is also laid out in your council's constitution. But if in doubt, seek guidance from your democratic services team. They are responsible for preparing the agenda and will be familiar with the procedure rules for your council. If an issue is urgent and a decision needs to be made before the next meeting, the chairman can allow a matter not on the agenda to be discussed, though whenever possible this is avoided, as members of the public and press will not be aware that the item is coming up. To ensure honesty and openness, all council papers, except those containing exempt information, are made available to the public either through the media or the council's own publicity channels, like its website. Councillors, all of them, are very supportive of, of new councillors who are coming in. So I don't think anybody wants to take advantage of, of someone's inexperience. I suspect that the main problem for new councillors is that they just don't understand what's going on um, and you know, perhaps need a little bit of explanation. Um, one of the things that I know happens in some councils is that uh, new councillors buddy up with uh, uh, experienced councillors who can explain uh, what the process is uh, and how they can go about making their points known.